showtime. Hi guys, I am about to go live. Um, well, I'm live on Facebook right now. Um, but I'm doing my uh, blog talk radio show, and that means that I'm going to be talking today about empaths. Um, the topic is empaths, we're no angels. So I'm going to be talking about that today, and I will be probably taking callers. Sometimes I'm asked to do readings online um, on the call, so we might do that too, but mainly I just want to talk a little bit about empaths today, so thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the show. Um, it's going to be a, a half an hour show, so um, I'm going to get on here in about 20 seconds uh, and start the radio show, and uh, you guys can just listen to what I'm talking about today. Get to see me face-to-face -face live. And you can feel free to type in, too, if you guys want to. Here we go. Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in today. This is Blog Talk Radio, and this is Ingrid Karazinger. I'm doing a show on psychic development, and today we are talking about empaths, we're no angels. So you might be familiar with the idea of an empath. Empaths are those who are very sensitive, that can feel energy. Uh, it's real easy for them to tell you know, if somebody's in front of them, they can usually tell if that person is truthful uh, more about them than, you know, an average person would uh, because they sense, they feel, they're sensitive. And most often that they've been that way their entire lives, just kind of grew up very sensitive. So I have a book, The Psychic Way. In my book, I have a whole chapter on empaths. One reason that um, empaths become the way they are, that they're so sensitive, has to do with usually some kind of early childhood um, trauma or something that happened that basically taught the child, taught the empath from an early age how to explore the outer realm, how to explore outside the body. And it usually meant the child was feeling something that was overwhelming, um, traumatic, and so that they learned to leave their body. And also it could be that there was, um, you know, erratic parenting, uh, drug abuse, could be illness in the family, different things that also make the child overly sensitive to others, overly sensitive to is your father going to walk in and be in a good mood today or a bad mood? Should you be scared? Should you be ready for whatever's going to happen? So an empath also has the ability to read people very quickly and easily because it becomes a survival technique. Uh, there could be an illness that you, you grew up with, maybe a parent, um, an alien parent who uh, had to be taken care of. Again, having that sympathy, that empathy, and having to deal with life and death at a very early age. That can also create the empath. But often what happens is the empath learns how to go beyond the physical, how to go beyond what you see, um, what most people see normally. And they're able to read others. They're able to sense energy. Um, if there's something in the room, another entity, they're able to notice or feel that as well. And oftentimes they have scary experiences until they realize what's going on. So growing up, they may be, you know, really frightened of the dark or frightened of um, being alone. And they end up oftentimes creating a lot of activity, drama, become workaholics, um, always have some kind of relationship going on that helps to detract, distract them from paying attention to what's going on within them. Meaning that all of the things that, you know, some people grow up with that are not empaths, they grow up really focused on themselves and what they need. But an empath will grow up very focused on everything around them. So they're always going to want something around them to focus on so that they actually know who they are. That they need that. They need other people around them to understand who am I. Because when you're alone, you don't know who you are because you are so focused 
whenever that happened, whenever it started on the outside world. So the point of an empath, the point of our, um, you know, training, our existence, our life mission is really to learn how to focus inward, how to go within, how to start taking that focus and energy back and how to start focusing on what we need and want and being less interested in everything that's going on around us. When I say things like that, when I try to start training an empath to focus inward, their first words are usually, well, that sounds so selfish. And I'm like, you know, be selfish for a while. I think you earned it. I think you've spent your life worrying about, thinking about, and trying to help other people. So I think you can spend a little bit of time on yourself now. And this, of course, it's a big challenge. And of course, you know, an empath is going to find reasons not to or keep falling back in that old pattern of creating drama so they have something to run and rescue or pay attention to all the time. So they don't have to do that. So they don't have to focus on themselves. So the empath challenge is learning to take care of themselves, learning how to focus inward. Meditation is great for that. Learning healing work, any kind of healing modality, energy, how energy works, creating those boundaries, creating a way to create your own sacred space and say, this is my space and that is your space. Oftentimes the empath from a childhood has their boundaries stepped on, has someone or several people, it could be parents, could be siblings, could be some kind of outside influence from an early age. They'll come in and they will say, you don't matter, I matter, and step all over those boundaries and make the empath think that they don't get to have boundaries. Well, I'm here to tell you that you do get to have them, that you matter, your life matters, and you are allowed to create these boundaries and you can start right now. You can start today. Create those boundaries and start giving yourself all that love that you maybe did not get as a child. You have to treat that inner child, that empath self of yours now as the adult, as a child and start nurturing, taking care of, holding, especially when those emotions come up, those old patterns. Maybe you want to go back to being focused on other people. Maybe you want to fall back into a relationship where it's all about the other person and find ways to not Pay attention to yourself. And each time you do that, each time you find yourself trying to fall back in the old pattern, just bring it back in and say, you know what? No, no, I need this. I need to take that child by the hand, that inner child, hold them and say, you know what? I'm here for you. I'm here for you now and I'm going to stay here for you forever. And as soon as you start trusting that, as soon as the empath starts trusting that, that they are going to be nurturing themselves and that they can trust themselves, then they're going to start to let go of unhealthy relationships. They're going to start letting go of all those distractions and drama and their life is going to be very simple and happy and joyful and they'll have supportive people come in. It's going to be wonderful all the way around. Um, so why I call this show today Empaths Were No Angels is because Empaths um, tend to go through not only those childhood traumas, but because of them and because of the chaos they usually begin with, they attract that chaos throughout their lives. They go seeking it out because that's what's comfortable for them, like a warm blanket. Meaning that empaths usually go through a lot of hard times. Um, they explore all sorts of things. And it's usually because they've had a very dramatic beginning to their life, meaning that the bar was raised so high in what's going to excite you or what's going to interest you as an empath that you're going to go out there and you're going to find more and more exciting things, things that are weird, things that are different, things that are dangerous because you don't have that fear. You've already gone through some terrible things. So you don't, you're not afraid of being hurt. You're not afraid of something happening to you. You're just going to keep pushing and pushing. So again, you're going to find yourself as an empath going through a, a very turbulent life until you start realizing that um, you are still focused on everything else around you. 
you know, you, you see things about meditation all the time. You see, um, you know, just sit down, relax, meditate. It's good for you. But you might not understand why. You might not understand what is this really going to do for me. And I'm here to tell you as an empath, it is crucial. It is crucial to do energy work and to do meditation. Guided meditation is easier. I don't, I don't promote sitting there quietly and trying not to think about your grocery list. I really think guided meditation is the best way, especially for beginners. You can find a ton of stuff on YouTube. I love um, the stuff that Doreen Virtue has. She has CDs. And, of course, I have things on YouTube, some guided meditations. You just sit and do that for five minutes each day, a couple times a week. And what's going to happen is you're going to start pulling that energy back. You're going to start feeling who you are. You're going to explore that inner world. And you're going to find not only is there nothing to fear in there, not only is there nothing scary in there, but there's something beautiful. There's something magical. There's something pure untouched in the center of this all and when you peel all those layers of way of all the experiences you've had and how they've affected you and you go to that very pure source you're going to find that that untouched part that's perfect and beautiful is who you are now and who you are meant to be because the empath goes through this the whole point of all of this is you are an angel is because you came here to help others it's a lifetime of service but you have to go through all of those things so that you know every aspect of the human experience so that you know and understand when someone comes to you how to help them you can feel it you can see it you can read them you learn about energy and you take back that power you understand how to heal them in a physical energetic way you learn how to do readings. You learn how to give people insight into themselves. These are things that empaths need to learn, whether they do it professionally or not. They need to learn them so that they can take back their ability to be of service in a real practical way that also brings joy and happiness into your life. I guarantee as an empath, you have tried your whole life to help people, but you found that all it did was drain you and never seem to really help the other person. It's because you were doing it the wrong way. You have to go back. You have to follow your heart. Go back into who you are. When you understand who you are, how important you are, and have that self-love, create your boundaries, then you can begin to heal and help others. You can't do it from a place of a raw empath. All you're going to do is hurt yourself all the way down the road. And I'm sure you've gone through that. If you're an empath, you already know. But understand that it's never too late. You can start now. You can start anytime you want. Just give yourself some time to do meditation every day. When you do that, when you sit down and say, I'm going to meditate right now, you're telling yourself, I'm giving you permission right now. I'm giving you permission to love yourself, to care about yourself, to do something for you. And I want to know you. Because when you have this great relationship with yourself, guess what? You can have great relationships with other people. Have you tried to have relationships with anybody and found that there's always problems? There's always drama? There's always some kind of crap happening? It's because it's your relationship with yourself that is not ready yet. The more you meditate, the more you understand yourself, and the more you love yourself, the more love you can give to other people because you won't have any more conditions on love. You won't need anything from other people. You will simply be loving from your heart because you are just love. You have it already. You don't need anything else. Guided meditation, learning energy, healing, sharing, going to Reiki shares, whatever you can find. There's tons of stuff. Meetup.com, Facebook. You, you have no excuse. There's, there's always a meetup of these people that are trying to create a better life for themselves. And when you start surrounding yourself with people who see you who you are now, 
You start surrounding yourself with a support system of people who see what you want to be, who you want to become, and support that mission. It gives you so much more power on your road to becoming that. When you stay stuck or stay around people that you knew or were around when you were someone you did not like yourself to be, every time you see them, you can easily fall back into being that person. It doesn't mean that you can't love them or care about them. It means that you need to do what's best for you. You need to move forward. Giving yourself that support, whether it's just in here or in here and around you. Now, I say we're no angels. Empaths, we're no angels. The reason I say that is because empaths want to help people. They do. And sometimes they find great ways to do it. They become massage therapists. They become uh, wellness consultants. Um, they, they go into all sorts of lines of works, counselors. But the reason, again, they were able to help people on a real level is because they went through those experiences themselves. They've gone through the darkness. They know what the darkness is like. And they've come out the other side saying, you know what, I want to help people. So anything that somebody says to them, especially like a counselor, anything they say to you, it doesn't phase you because you've probably gone through it. So we're no angels. That's right. We've gone, probably done a lot of things that a non-empath would balk at, that would be shocked. And that's why those non-empaths are not usually the ones that are counselors that are in those lines of work because they don't really understand the, the psyche. But those of us who are empaths and are helping in that way, we are not walking around with halos. We are not helping people because we are Mother Teresa. We're not helping people uh, because we have these big feathery wings and we've just des descended from a cloud. We're helping people because we've done some crap. We've done a lot of things that maybe you don't feel you're proud of. Maybe you kind of try not to think about those things that you've done or the people that you've known or the experiences you've had. So, yeah, earth angels, we're not angelic, but we are earth angels. We are here to help. We're here to understand, to give empathy. That is what the empath is for, to give empathy. Because I find in my line of work doing spiritual counseling that you know, somebody might say they want to come and they want to, they want to hear about what's going to happen next week or, you know, am I going to get that job? But I find throughout the conversation that that person is longing for someone to look them in the eye and to love them and care about them and listen to them, to have empathy. Because most people walk around, even with people they care about, and never get that empathy. They never get that feeling, that sense, that person knows who they are and sees them for who they are and doesn't judge them. And that's what empaths do. We don't judge because we've been there. So our work is really important. But you have to take care of the vessel. You have to do everything possible to take care of yourself. Pull that energy inward. Find a connection. Build that relationship so that you can have better relationships with everyone else. It's vital. Empaths, we're no angels. You know, I, I've, I've talked to people in the metaphysical community. I've had groups, I've taught classes, and I've had, you know, people come to my classes and, and look at me with that, that look, that twinkle in their eye, like, you know, like she's some goddess or that she's, you know, perfect. And, um, and it being an empath, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not anything that people might think we are. If, if anything, we are, we've been through hell and back and we're strong. And I take strong, I take strong over pretty. I take strong over angelic. I think it's important for us to know who we are. And that's another reason, you know, I've written these books, I have the YouTube videos, I do these shows, teach my classes. I care about education for the empath. And almost everybody that comes to my classes, my groups, 
they're all empaths. Almost all of them are empaths. We're drawn to each other. We're drawn to this type of thing. We understand each other, and we're looking for our tribe. We're looking for others like us so that we can feel more normal. Because I guarantee you, you probably have a group of friends that um, probably not all of them are empaths. You might have one or two. But for the most part, you're probably hanging around with people who are opposite of that so that you can constantly focus on them. Focus on what's what's going on with them. What problems are they having? How can I help them? How can I how can I heal or save these people around me? Um, and if you have a bunch of empaths doing that, it doesn't work because they're all trying to help each other. And that's why empaths tend to feel very alone and misunderstood. And they can go their whole lives feeling like that. And so it's really important for you to find your tribe, to find others, to say yes. Yes, you have my permission to take care of yourself, to love yourself, to rest, to sit down here and take some deep breaths and meditate without worrying about anything else, without worrying about what other people are doing, to be around others who care as deeply about you as you care about them. That's why it's important to have, have that support system. And... I also feel that it's important for empaths to understand that, you know, you are here for service. And when you start to meditate more, when you start to learn about energy and how it works, when you start to manifest, connect with the divine energy, have more clarity, you're going to understand that you are here for service and that this, this is where you're meant to be. What you have dreamed about doing, what you, what you feel like you're here for to help others, it's true. But you're not going about it the way that is divine, and that's why you suffer. You suffer because you haven't focused on the one thing that can really save you from yourself. And that's a divine connection. That's your heart. That's your soul. That's, that's inside. It's not out here. You're never going to find it out here. And you may have run around looking for it your whole life, looking for it. Where is it? Where is it? But it's, it's really simple. Just take a few deep breaths right now. Just, just relax right now if you can and take a few deep breaths. <sighs> Give yourself permission. I know that the empath will start thinking, no, but there's something I have to do. There's always something I have to do. I don't have time for this. I don't have time to relax. There's something that I have to go create or save or help with but the only thing that really needs help is you and if you understand that about the universe about how earth works about how humanity works that everything that you see is very telling meaning that if somebody is really trying to help that means that they themselves really need help so we try to put it outside of ourselves because we don't always understand that it's as easy as just doing some meditation every day. That's all we need to do. Not everybody knows that. They don't understand that. So they go looking for it. If somebody is yelling at somebody else, they're yelling at them, judging them. That's because they judge themselves. They're angry with themselves. They have a lot of guilt. It has nothing to do with the other person. But you'll start seeing how everybody, everybody acts toward others the way that they feel about themselves. And the more you recognize that, the easier it's going to be to say, wow, that person, I can see what's really going on. I can understand what they really need. And at that point, which is also in my book and my classes, is proactive channeling. And you just bring that energy down and send it to them. You wouldn't believe the miracles I've heard. People come back and tell me. How amazing that works. It does. Of course, I've used it my whole life, but other people are always surprised at how well it works. You bring that energy down from the divine and imagine it going out. It's like magic. If you, if you like that word, you bring it out, send it out, and that healing energy is, is just going to encompass and hold that person in love and how quickly their situation changes. So you can do that to people around you. You can do that to a work situation, to your coworkers, your boss, somebody who rubs you the wrong way. I suggest doing it to people you really uh, feel like you don't like because 
you can see a situation change so drastically when you start doing that every day. Again, it's not about them. It's about you and how you feel and how you want to feel. So you start sending that energy and loving on them, sending it, loving them. And you find that life changes in ways that you never imagined. And I just happen to know this because I've lived it. And I've also taught people for so many years and I've seen the results and they've all come back and told me about the changes in their lives. So I don't talk about it from a standpoint of, of a lecture. I have tried and true exercises and they're simple and I want to give them away. I want everybody to know how to do it because I believe in a better world. I want to live in a better world, don't you? I want to live in a world where everybody feels joy and connection, where we help each other in a real way. I don't like helping someone where you do something one day and the next day they have another problem, where there's always a problem. You're just not helping. Doing something for someone is not helping them because we are each capable of helping ourselves if we take the time to go inward. We are all capable of loving and caring for ourselves in the deepest way and manifesting the most glorious things into the world if we just understand we have the power. I took this computer class once and the first thing, the first day, the teacher said was, go click on this help menu. There's a drop down menu, go look and you'll see everything you need right here. He said, it doesn't matter what you come into, what problems you face throughout this class. If you know where your help button is, that's all you need. That's all you need. And it, it has been that way ever since. All the help you need is right here. It is that divine connection. It is asking for help within yourself and allowing yourself to stand up and be amazing and be beautiful. Why not? Imagine everything you've done in your life and how things have turned out. Have they turned out the way you want them to? Do you feel the way you want to? Do you have the relationships that you want? Do you have the situation, the money, everything that you've ever wanted? Great. If you do, wonderful. <laughs> if not, imagine all the choices you've made leading up to this. Imagine all the things you've done and tried. And I guarantee you probably tried them all over and over and over again. What I want you to do is try something for me and do the opposite. Can you do that? Come in and do the opposite of what you've done before. And that is sending love to everybody, sending energy to everybody, doing meditation. Try some new things. If they don't work, you haven't really lost anything, have you? Empaths, we're no angels. But we are earth angels. We are here to be of service. And when you get in direct contact with that divine, with your angels, with your mission, I guarantee your life is going to be 100% blissful when you recognize this is what I am meant to do in a real way. Using energy healing, reading people, doing spiritual work. When you are in touch with that, there's nothing you can't accomplish. Because you aren't in your own way. You've dropped the ego. You understand that you're here as a vessel, a steward of the human race, that you are here to help. And you're going to stop trying to save people and you're going to start doing what you are moved to do, what is needed at the time because you're going to hear that. You're going to hear that voice in your mind saying, go over here, do this for this person. Or simply sit and relax and be joyful right now. Just listen to that wonderful voice. And the more you meditate, the more you do energy work, the more you open that river, you widen that river of how much information you bring in, how much energy, how much you can manifest with, how much you can create with, and how much beauty that you see um, in the world. So just, just keep it up. Just keep trying these different things. And like I said, 
you can send some energy to somebody the next time you have a situation that arises. I've done it into really loud, busy rooms, babies crying. I send that energy out and just like let it drop like a blanket on everybody. And it's amazing how it just gets really quiet because everyone is always open to receive, but they tend to receive the wrong thing. We tend to receive those negative energies, especially empaths. We just sit there like victims. Guess what? Turn it around. Send the energy outward. Be proactive. You send the energy outward. You can't be a victim. You can't sit here and take all this crap. You are sending it out. You are being the leader and teacher that an empath is supposed to be. You're taking back your life. And you're doing what you're here to do. Because empaths, I'm sorry, we are the wave of the future. We are the ones that this earth belongs to. And we are the ones that are helping others awaken. We have a job to do. And I'm not, I'm not done here until every single empath knows what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to do it. We're going to take back this world and, and heal and show everybody that it's okay. It's okay to be beautiful. Thank you for watching today, guys. I am done with my show. Uh, readingsbyingrid.com if you want to email me or see anything more about me. Readingsbyingrid.com Otherwise, see you on Facebook. You're no angel. Bye, guys. <laughs>